Hi, I'm Richard Lang and this is my friend Luke Vermeeren and I'm going to chat to Luke about seeing. Hello. <laughs> so, uh, tell us how you've, what brought you to seeing in the first place? How long ago was it? I think it's about 13 years ago. I think 98. You gave a workshop in Antwerp. Mm. I was um, uh, practicing Tai Chi at that time. And um, the physical movements were easy for me. Somehow this body picked it up easy. But I noticed that my mind didn't follow the movements. So when, when I practiced my Tai Chi, I would find myself in some position and think, no, I did something wrong somewhere along the movement, but I didn't remember when because my mind was wandering off. Something wasn't quite right. Yes. And uh, so I, I thought I have to find a way to train my mind, to focus. Mm. And I was looking into meditation a bit. Um, and then I saw an announcement of a workshop, The Headless Way. And um, I thought, well, if I lose my head, all the thoughts will also be gone. So my mind will be focused. That sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> well, the first workshop I, I gave myself, there was, uh, I asked the people, why did you come? And one of the women said, well, I saw a headless workshop and I thought, when my head is gone, all the thoughts will be gone. And then I thought, no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so, um, so you came to a workshop. I came to your workshop. Um, I can't say it was a big bang. It wasn't a, an enormous shift in my life. Um, I think the thing that struck me most was the cart experiment, where mm. all of a sudden, look disappeared. Mm. Um, and, and Dramatic thought, in a quiet way. Yes, yes. It was a feeling of freedom, mm. Mm. of not having to, uh, to act anymore, in a way. Mm. A lot of luggage that I could drop because I, it wasn't needed. I could just enjoy the world, in a way. What a relief. What a relief, <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, so I bought a little booklet, blue booklet, in a cassette. Yeah. And I uh, said, I'm going to practice this. And I lost the booklet and I lost the cassette. Never practiced. <laughs> but I made myself a tube and tried it in front of the mirror. Oh, well done. Yeah. And I subscribed to a magazine, Dutch magazine, uh, that um, Rough Pieper from Bruges uh, had brought to your workshop. Uh, which helped me a lot because it gave different traditions, different voices to see this mm. um, and to express this. And it helped me to, yeah, to check out what is it for me, what is it for those people and how mm. does it connect. Mm. And that was uh, the beginning. Um, there was a second workshop you gave, I think, three or four late years later in Antwerp, mm. where Hilde, my wife and I came. And afterwards I tried to get people together which worked for a few sessions and then the number of people diminished and eventually it stopped. And did you begin to find it making a difference in your life in some way? Well, at that time I don't think it was, uh, I was conscious of any difference. Mm. Um, but seeing that I couldn't get people together, I decided to go where the people meet. Mm. And that's here in Salisbury for mm. the Headless Gathering. Mm. So that was my motivation to, came, to come here the first time. To meet other people. Yes, and to share it and to exchange what, mean, what it does mean and, and what you experience. And that was a, a strong experience for me, being here for five days, using the experiments, talking to all kinds of people. Um, and I think from that moment on, it became more conscious. What, what does it mean? What does it change in my life? Mm. And the last years, um, more and more, I, I, there are things changing that I think are connected with seeing. Why do you think it was powerful for you to come together and to meet people? Do, have you got a sense of why? Well, um, you can see this with one experiment, but um, I always compare it to a curtain. Curtain opens, you see it. And then the curtain closes again mm -hmm. and your thinking starts analyzing what should I see, what, what did I see, did I see it right, did I see it completely. And being here for several days with people that don't need any ex explanation, 
if I talk about here, they know what I'm talking about. Right. So you, you have a very direct communication about it, about something you can't talk about, in mm. a way. Mm. <laughs> so you hear people tell their experience and, and their doubts and their questions. And this exchange makes me more aware of how I experience it and what mm. it means to me. Mm. So I hear myself explain something and I think, yes, that's it. <laughs> you hear yourself in, yeah. in, through your own mouth and through other mouths. Yes, yes. Ah. And uh, in what kinds of ways do you think it's, it's deepening in your life these days? Um, I think one aspect is that I enjoy the world, whatever happens. Mm -hmm. um, people usually complain when it rains, but rain can be beautiful and seeing the drops fall off the leaves and can be a beautiful sight. So rain and the sound of the rain. So I don't have these classes anymore of what I like and what I dislike. I still have them in a way. Mm -hmm. But there is always something shining through, which mm. makes me enjoy the world as it is at that moment. And it never rains here. It never rains. <laughs> it doesn't get wet, even in the shower. <laughs> and the second aspect is, is that um, I got rid of this mask. If I have contact with people, I don't feel the need to, to be someone, mm. to perform in a way, to... Uh, well, people give you a label, say, ah, oh, you're an engineer or you're into green energy or whatever. And I can say yes and still be free to explain something else. So you can accept the, the label and yet you are for yourself free of it. Yes, I know it's their label. They use it on me, but here there's never a label. So... I stay free of the label, accepting that they, for them it's easy to give the label and then they know which box I'm in. Yes. But I'm never in a box for it's myself. A wonderful <laughs> thing, isn't it? Yes, yes. Fantastic. Face to no face is another way of putting yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Mm. And do you find that it affects uh, you in making decisions? Like I know you've just changed your job and fairly recently, and mm -hmm. that was quite a big change, I suppose. Does, does, yes. it, does it come into that process at all, or, or not? Yes. Um, I'm convinced that I don't really take any decisions. There's just something pops up. It's an occasion and you say yes or no. Um, but in a way, for some things, like my job, when they called me on the telephone and said, uh, well, I'm Jim from EcoPower. I knew that he was going to ask and go to say, we have a job for you, will you come? So I knew I had to say yes or no. And it was easy because if I said no, it would be final. I wouldn't change jobs anymore. I'm 54 now, so it was an occasion I got, a trust I got from those people. So I said yes. And, and everything else went smoothly, in a way. And I realized that I can look at it from another angle and say, well, you change jobs, but you, you earn less and you have less holidays and you don't have an office for yourself. You're in one big room with 20 people. And um, the one who explains what you have to do is someone who is hardly 30 years old. So all these things could get, could uh, make me disappointed and say, well, I'm 54 and I, I have to earn more and I have to I should get be some in charge. status. Yes. Mm. Yes. But I, I don't find any difficult to, to drop that all and simply flow as it flows and enjoy it. You can relax back in your true status. Yes, yes. Um. And enjoying how, how these people work and how they accept me as I am for them. <laughs> and do you um, find yourself mentioning seeing to the people at work or not? No, at work not. Um, until now, 
maybe next week they will ask me, oh, how was your holiday? Where did you go? And then there's that difficult moment when you say, well, I did a workshop. Oh, what kind of workshop? <laughs> <laughs> and then what do you say? <laughs> well, sometimes I um, say it's something spiritual, uh, people meeting. And sometimes there's, you feel some opening and, and you can talk about it more clearly. And I know one of the persons, um, she knows I'm in the headless way, I'm, I'm doing something with the headless way. I don't know how much she knows, but um, she mentioned it once. So it might be an opening. But even if it, there is no opening, it's, it's no problem. Mm -hmm. um, because you are open. Yes, yes. You are the opening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the people who, will, who need it will recognize it and there are plenty of occasions to, to get in touch with it. And if someone were to ask you, like me now, <laughs> what on earth does it mean to you? I know one can never define it, but what, what comes up? Freedom and gratitude, I would say. A freedom of, of the labels. Freedom to, to choose, in a way, whatever you want. And then don't attach to status or, or any conviction or belief. Mm. And gratitude that this all happens. That there are different people and there is the sunshine and there are the flowers and the animals. and. I get food and, and last year I realized when uh, Alan was playing the piano here mm. there was this thought of oh it's such a pity that I don't play any music and then I thought no Alan plays it for me mm. he, he was learning he was doing all this trouble and then he gave me the music mm. so I can enjoy it and it's my music in a way mm. and I don't feel the need to learn it for myself. Someone else had that need and, and I can enjoy it. Mm. So that's the gratitude, I think. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you, Luke. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>